Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with that hot, juicy beef, the hottest online. What do we got today? World War Three is at 11.59. P. Diddler and the debate. What happened last night? Welcome back to Sigma Tiger News. Welcome, if it's your first time tuning in. <clears throat> Don't get used to the mask, it's coming off. Okay? A couple weeks, perhaps. Maybe we'll do it on Halloween. How about that? Sounds perfect. All right, let's dive right in. What do we got? Boom! Greg Gutfeld, he's a Fox News analyst or whatever. He's talk show host, really. <clears throat> he rips the DNC media cover up a bombshell ICE report of 425,000 illegal immigrants who are convicted criminals being released into the U.S. This is the biggest crime story I've ever seen. They would rather you die or be raped than Trump be right. Ugh. Uh, Gutfeld, tell us no, it's not 60,000 rapists. It's only 8,000. It's only 7,000 murderers. Cool. I'm glad you're okay with that. I'm glad. I'll take your fact check. But anybody who defends this or says it's not that big a deal is complicit and they should be held accountable. These bastards were more offended by stories of cats being eaten than real stories. Real stories reported here of actual rape and murder. Yeah, dead on. The fact that these people are like, oh, but the people should have their dreams fulfilled. Yeah, but what? Because they got let out of prison? early and the murderers and venezuela was like yeah you know what i mean like take the bus north anyway iran's president seeks a regional response to israel we said that they were going to do an attack on uh the airport in tel aviv i think no real news came of that but there was a terrorist attack some dude with a gun went out there shooting some people killed some people unfortunately uh hezbollah by herself cannot stand against a country that is armed to the teeth yeah with the help of uh, America. Absolutely. So uh, they're like, well, what are we going to do? Regional countries, Islamic countries, must stand together to confront Israel over its recent strikes against Hezbollah in Lebanon. All right. Well, they took the lead and they were like, uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and uh, start. And you guys uh, back us up, okay? Back us up, please. Let's see what they did last night. Yeah, so they're watching these bombs come in. Many of them uh, look like they're being destroyed before impact. The Iron Dome doing its job. Additional footage of Iranian ballistic missile impact here in Israel. Let's have a look. Definitely looks like some targets were struck, for sure. Dozens, possibly hundreds. Yeah, so it doesn't look good. Not good at all. Well, uh, Palestinian killed by shrapnel in the West Bank. IDF chief says Israel will choose when to retaliate. Biden says active discussion with Israel on how to respond to Tehran, Iran. Yeah, what are they going to do? Boots on the ground, perhaps? Well, anyway, that Palestinian who got hit there, uh, let's have a look and see what happens. It was debris. It wasn't a direct hit. This is unbelievable. Tune in. Hey. 
This is graphic, so avert your eyes if you don't want to see it, but like, wow. So that was like some sort of missile casing. Something. And, uh, yeah. Direct hit. Iran spent $300 million firing rockets at Israel and killed one, a Palestinian hit by Iranian missile debris. I mean, like, what are the chances? According to Axios, Israeli officials state that they will soon launch a significant retaliation against Iran for Tuesday's large-scale ballistic missile attack, with targets to likely include the Iranian oil industry, air defense systems, and other strategic sites across Iran, as well as the possibility of assassination strikes against key Iranian figures. Officials further state that if Iran decides to respond to Israel's retaliatory strike, then all options will be on the table, including the destruction of Iranian nuclear sites. And this is what everyone's saying. Like, go for that. Like, just do that. But make sure you get them. And they don't have any other secret ones. Because as soon as you destroy all of them, if they got one secret one left, you're darn right they're going to shoot it. You know it for a fact. So, uh, yeah, that's a risky play. It's 1159. We, if you've been following the show at all, last year, we were like literally almost about a year ago, a couple of days since the attack, we were like 11.45. Then we, I think we got all the way up to like 11.54. And then we kind of pulled back. The Houthis, they were doing some stuff. They got some extra missiles. But the, uh, then, boom, like we are 11.54, 11.55, 11.59 right now. Why? Just in. Israel launches ground invasion into southern Lebanon. In accordance with the decision of the political echelon, a few hours ago, the IDF began limited, localized, and targeted ground raids based on precise intelligence against Hezbollah terrorists' targets and infrastructure in southern Lebanon. These targets are located in villages. So they were sending out the report, like, if you're in this building or near this building, get out. Lebanese army withdraws from the southern border with Israel. Come on in. We're not even going to, like, put up a fight. Lebanese armors was seen withdrawing from several positions on the southern border with Israel. Local residents and security sources told Reuters. Israel goes in. IDF confirms boots on the ground in southern Lebanon as bombs rain down from the sky after a day of ratcheting tensions. Yeah. The Israeli military last night confirmed its troops had launched a long-awaited ground invasion of Lebanon as fears mount that the escalation could plunge the Middle East into all-out war. Could... I mean, it has. It is the current happening. Like, you know, they don't often announce World War II. Like, today is World War II. It's like, you're just in it. And then when it's over, or during it, they're like, yeah, this is uh, pretty significant. This is World War II. We need to get more backing. So let's get the axis of evil. Name them that. Yeah, that's great. Right. And we're, uh, we're the allies. Okay? And we're red, white, and blue. Let's get the posters up. Uncle Sam, we need you. Yeah. Conscription. Boom. Where And who, who's doing it? Russia, for sure. America slid a little conscription thing into uh, one of their bills during uh, the pandemic that women can now be conscribed to work. I mean, to war. Sorry, not work. <laughs> all right. Russian military draft 133,000 conscripts in fall call up. All young. Unfortunate for them. Yikes. So uh, Trump hopefully gets elected and ends this war because Kamal's a, a war pig and so is Waltz and they will continue. Uh, while Russia is waiting, though, they're deploying wolves to the front line to detect incoming Ukrainian drones. Interesting. Uh, Russia has started deploying wolves to the front line of the war because the animals react early to the sound of approaching kamikaze drones. I guess they hear the fans and they're like, and they're like the dogs are reacting. It's like the canary in the coal mine. This is the, the husky in, in the snow. The Siberian in the snow. There you go. Boom. All right. Anyway, females were taken from the Siberian region of uh, Kasi and raised by wolf tamer Alexander Konchakov. So he's the man. Uh, transgender man, 39, and his non-binary partner welcome a baby thanks to sperm donor who was also transgender and so was the doctor. So unpack that. Reuben Sharp, 39, from Brighton, transitioned to a man 12 years ago. Six years ago, he decided that he wished to become pregnant and have a child. So, was a woman, intact, reproductive organs. He and his non-binary partner, Jay, so this must have been 
a man who decided they are interested in both or are both not sure uh sought a transgender sperm donor online or perhaps jay was a woman i don't know what the heck's going on here the couple welcomed the birth of their baby jamie three months ago and does it matter no it doesn't because it's hey like whatever like tune in in 30 years check back mark your calendar 20 24 plus 30 2054 October 2nd, we're going to find out about this little boy or girl, whatever happens to him. Mr. Sharp went through endless tests but got his first break, Mr. Sharp, when he began having a period for the first time in six years. So I guess he got off the meds. Uh, he told Sonny Mears, it's taken six years to get this far, but now we have in our arms. That was the end goal. I finally feel complete. I mean, like, whatever. I mean, that's my answer. University of Wyoming Volleyball will forfeit match to team with trans player. I applaud that. Because I think that women's rights are being eroded. Everything that the feminism fought for is now like only fans. That's what's left. The University of Wyoming Volleyball team will forfeit its Saturday match with San Jose State University, which has a transgender player. UW had previously said it would play, but has been under pressure to forfeit from an advocacy group and Republican lawmakers. Okay, yeah, so it's other people. It's definitely the far-right influence that has come down hard onto this coach. And, uh, yeah, it's not the coach. It's not the players. It's other people forcing them to make this decision, of course. Yes, absolutely. Uh, British clergyman 69 dies during night of drug-fueled sex with Belgian priest 60, who is then arrested after cops find ecstasy in his Antwerp rectory. Not rectum. They didn't find it back door. They found it in his rectory where he sleeps. British clergyman died after a night of sex and drugs with Belgian priest who has since been arrested on drug-related charges. Belgian authorities revealed the 69-year-old Brit who has not been named was spending the evening with his fellow cleric, 60, at a rectory in Kalmuth, out North Antwerp on Thursday. After taking ecstasy and poppers together and having sex, the British priest suddenly fell unwell, the prosecutor's officer said. Sorry, office. Uh, shortly after midnight, his Belgian colleague identified only as Pastor B called the emergency service who could not resuscitate his companion. The sudden arrest of the pastor visiting colleagues as the Pope traveled through Belgium has left the small parish of Hyde in shock. Yeah. He hooked up with one of his old backdoor buddies and uh, got on the drugs. Liquid incense would never... What is this? This is what they were taking? Amyl nitrate or poppers. Made famous in the 60s. Studio 54. It appears that the two men had used ecstasy and poppers together and had had sex. Two ecstasy pills were also found. Poppers refer to amyl nitrate, a liquid compound that can be inhaled for a brief rush of mild euphoria and dizziness. Because, you know, you need to take these drugs to have to do those things to each other. I feel like it. Like, you know. Or just because it makes it feel better. Of course. Because... It obviously feels terrible. What the heck? Anyway. Well, here's a vicar. Look at this sidebar. 78 took meth, heroin, and ketamine for years to help him relate to the followers. Perhaps all of his followers were drug addicts. 90% of cheese sold in America is infiltrated by Pfizer. What? are you talking about? 90% of the cheese sold in the U.S. does not use animal rennet and instead uses a genetically modified organism, GMO, made by Pfizer. No idea. What? FPC, or fermentation-produced chymosin. This bioengineered chymosin, FPC, was granted generally recognized as safe grass status, meaning Pfizer was exempt from the pre-approval requirements that apply to other non gras new food additives. The only safety study used to approve these FPCs was a short-term 90-day trial in rats. That's enough. It's good. Totally fine. Since Pfizer's demonstrated what is often referred to as a substantial equivalence, the FDA concluded that bioengineered chymosin was substantially equivalent to calf renin and needed neither special labeling nor indication of its source or method of production. Just slide it in. 
In general, federal law requires the FDA to ensure that food additives are safe and mandates a rigorous pre-market safety root process, but the loophole equals grass. 43% of food additives are designed, sorry, designated grass and don't get FDA oversight. Unbelievable. Essentially, we must trust that food companies will conduct unbiased safety determinations before adding these new grass substances to our food. No! I mean, of course they're going to do that. They're not worried about, like, saving money and just getting the cheapest thing that's available into the food. And what? We don't need to test it? Fire up the machines, man. Get that put in the cookies. Grass substances do not require approval or notification to the U.S. FDA prior to marketing. When the purchase cheese, seek out animal or traditional renants first, the vegetable renants as a second choice. Avoid cheeses containing any microbial or genetically modified renants altogether. So look out, cheese lovers. Not the best thing to be eaten. And God rest your soul to Pete Rose, one of the greatest ball players of all time, who allegedly was a cheat. Died at 83. Confirm the news family's asking for privacy. Absolutely. Don't believe there's any sort of uh, uh, cause of death. Rose was in a wheelchair, but we're told it's just because his back was aching. He appeared to be in good spirits, taking photos, signing Rose fans. And then he later died. And that's how it works. You just die in your sleep if you're lucky. Hall of Famer Dikembe Mutombo dies of brain cancer at 58. Wow. Young and rare. Interesting. Well, uh, the Hall of Fame finger-wagging center who spent much of his post-basketball career as an ambassador for the sport died of brain cancer at age 58. Real two years ago, he was undergoing treatment. Two years ago, 2022. For a brain tumor. Hmm, tumor. Tumors are on the rise. Dikembe Mutombo is simply larger than life. Absolutely. All right, well, rest in peace to Pete Rose and Dikembe Mutombo. Just have one addition here. Our goal of the season, our goals of the season are to provide people with information from physicians and experts about uh, COVID-19. We have to work hard with those who are vaccine hesitant. Of course, absolutely. Interesting. NBA legend Dikembe Mutombo dies at 58 after a battle with brain cancer. Rest in peace. Um, we covered the chlorine gas explosion uh, chemical fire in Georgia and uh, the last scene we had was people driving by taking a video I told them to get out of town pack your bags and go well good thing they did they were ordered to over 90,000 Georgia residents take shelter after chemical fire let's have a look then 17,000 people near Atlanta are wondering when they'll be able to go back home after a chemical plant fire spewed potentially toxic smoke in the air this is what it looked like in Conyers, Georgia, for most of the day Sunday, the air was so dangerous to breathe, authorities shut down a busy interstate, backing up traffic for hours. The fire broke out inside the BioLab pool chemical plant when water from a sprinkler mixed with a product causing a chemical reaction. People who live in this area have been here before. Authorities say this is the third major chemical incident at this same plant in the last seven years. Whoa, three incidents in seven years not looking good all right total devastation in chimney rock north carolina we talked about the hurricane let's get some more footage of exactly what's going on just devastating it's people's homes what's left of them Calm after the storm. Heartbreaking. Someone's boat. Some birds. Kayak. Other boats. Not moving, obviously. It's absolutely devastating. All right, what else? We've got chilling drone footage from Asheville, North Carolina. These people are completely cut off from society.
apocalyptic. Absolutely insane. So there you have it, people. Pray for the people that uh, were lost. All the lost souls. Pray for the people just trying to pick up the pieces. Unbelievable. Engine carnage. Saltwater is making electric cars blow up as Hurricane Helene wreaks havoc and drivers issued harsh warning. What to do if you're caught in a flood? Hold on. Like... Likely it's the stuff that's in the water that kills you. It's the debris that's washing around. It's not the water that drowns you. It's the stuff that's floating around in it. All right, so yeah, electric car fires. Apparently when these things uh, get salt water on them, they will not go out. The fire department comes, puts them out forever and ever and ever, and nothing happens. Well, uh, I am Leah, bossy Leah, at bossy underscore Leah on X. Things that helped me survive, Helene, a gas car, a gas stove, a gas hot water heater, a gas chainsaw, gas. She left out the gas. You need the gas. So if you didn't have any gas, all those would have been useless. And cash, of course. Things that are and were useless during Helene. Remember this for all you people out there. Electric cars, electric appliances, debit cards, the city bus, the government, diversity, uh, my tax dollars in Ukraine. Yeah, taking a big piss there, but hilarious at that because she's 100% right. Death toll triples in Asheville area after Hurricane Helene guts North Carolina. There were bodies in the trees. So we do not have footage of that, thankfully. But absolutely horrific. The scenes are devastating. We've seen it. Um, over 100 people have been confirmed dead. Uh, 8,400 people in Black Mountain. Just completely all but destroyed. So we pray for all you people out there. We got involved with that. Uh, very interesting here. This guy here is a little bit of a conspiracy guy, whatever, into thin air. He was covering the uh, Asian uh, flight that disappeared and some orbs that were floating around it. Some interesting stuff. Check them out. Into thin air. Uh, anyway, a company has plans to reopen lithium mines in Asheville before the storm. Yeah, they were given like the green light. It's one of the biggest lithium mines on earth. Duke Energy, North Carolina's largest battery, now running in Asheville, built in 2020. Article below. This is huge. What are the chances of this? Only 70 miles away is the biggest lithium operation in the United States. We saw some very strange anomalies in this hurricane. He's following some stuff there, too. Some interesting weather stuff. In this hurricane, and uh, then just stalled over North Carolina and Tennessee. These are just ideas here. Just ideas. But with all that's going on in the world and everything that's happened in the past three days... The hurricane, there was a huge Verizon outage no one was talking about. They couldn't confirm or deny what was going on. And then the Georgia explosion at the chlorine plant. Just feels like some sort of attack on infrastructure. Feels like it. We talked about, you know, there's different countries working on, China specifically, working on infrastructure and trying to attack it. Whatever. How do I express that I'm concerned about the people of Western North Carolina and I'm also concerned about the potential future global economic disaster because spruce pine is the sole producer of ultra pure quartz for crucibles that all global semiconductors production rely on. So in the exact same area and uh, guess what? Like all semiconductor production may grind to a halt in six months. The entire world's economy depends on spruce pine. Like the quarries are against mountains and the production plants are right next to a river. Hey, Vince Beiser and Ed Conway Sky, I believe each of you wrote a book on this topic, so this is a very serious concern. Basically, he's saying that uh, if we can't extract this ultra-fine quartz for uh, production of semiconductors, check out glass, they're using glass for chips now, uh, world economy is basically just going to go, because what about AI? What about all that money they're putting into that and the chips and the stock market? Oof. Look out. Diddy's accuser's uh, attorney says high profile person seen with mogul in pornographic video. So someone's shopping around a sex tape. Uh, one of the Diddy tapes. Interesting. Um, no word on who. No speculation. Um, but yeah, they're shopping it around. Who could it be? Male or female? Whew. We'll keep you posted. She called me and told me about her assault and escape. She was at a friend's house who had industry ties, and Diddy decided to come to that house. Ooh, sounds like a female. Interesting. Developing. Diddy accused of abusing nine-year-old boy and spiking drinks with horse tranquilizer as 120 victims come forward with shocking claims. 
dude, when the house of cards comes falling down it crashes in bombshell allegations an additional 120 victims have come forward to accuse rapper sean diddy combs of sex abuse over a span of 25 years with several underage victims including a nine-year-old among them p diddler just the worst kind of human the claims were made by texas lawyer tony busby who announced he's representing 120 new victims who he believes have legitimate cases against the rapper turned media mogul of the 120 new victims 25 were underage when the alleged abuse happened between 91 and as recently as this year. Yikes. Prediction? He's dead. P, P. Diddy's dead by the end of the year. John Diddy Combs' case will soon reveal a list of other perpetrators. The names will shock you. Is this the same lawyer? But the names that we're going to name, seeing that our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've Yeah, told, Busby. Case is ready to be filed. They already know who they are. And I'm talking here about not just the cowardly but complicit bystanders. That is, those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. I'm talking about the people that participated. Just like Bill Cosby and Weinstein. Like, oh, it was just known. It was just known. So why didn't someone call out this, like, super old... P.O.S. loser Bill Cosby. Apparently he used to call like Chris Rock and be like, you're using the F word too much. And he was probably like, dude, you rape women. Because that's what I would say to him. Uh, Montana man to be sentenced for unthinkable crime on sheep. Yeah, we covered this last year as well. Montana man found guilty of illegally cloning sheep. Apparently you can just do it. Is due to be sentenced today. Uh, as a first-of-its-kind case, Arthur Jack Schubert of Vaughn, 81, used sperm imported from Kyrgyzstan to create gigantic Marco Polo sheep he called the Montana Mountain King. The decade-long attempt to clone and create hybrids from the hulking sheep uh, who can weigh up to 300 pounds, have curled horns and up to 5 feet long, aim to provide sheep to be used for trophy hunts. Interesting. I mean, this guy's an entrepreneur, a businessman. He's like, let's get the big sheep all clone them i don't think he was cloning them sounds like he was breeding them uh he described his client's efforts as being like jurassic park and told the court that cloning the enormous sheep had ruined his client's life there's an image of him probably hand soaked in sperm by the look of it caught red-handed white-handed caught white-handed yeah all right uh He's in a trophy hunting business since 87, successfully cloned a Marco Polo Argali sheep using remnants he bought from a hunter who had killed a sheep in Kyrgyzstan in 2019. He got a laboratory to create cloned embryos from Marco Polo Argali sheep sperm. So, like, where did he find this laboratory? The Montana Mountain King. He's now been confiscated by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services prosecuting now seeking prison time. Uh, five years or and or up to 250 grand or, or twice the financial gains how much money did he make on it probably nothing by the sound of his lawyer on a ranch in a barn in montana he created montana mountain king mmk is an extraordinary animal born of science and from a man who if he could rewrite history would have left the challenge of cloning marco polo only to the imagination of michael Crichton. i the guess there it is is that what he did crazy well it's what you can do with wilder's way uh, so, to the debate, let's close this out on a high note. Uh, J.D. Vance, you blame Trump? Who was VP for the past three years? Your running mate. Just check it out. Like, what an ownage. Once you blame Donald Trump, who has been the vice president for the last three and a half years? And the answer is your running mate, not mine. Donald Trump consistently made the world more secure. And Governor Waltz, you just totally owned him. And, uh, yeah, here it is. So this is what happened last night. This is literally last night. You have Prey. Let me get a zoom in on this. This is Waltz's eyes. Okay? Look at him. And this is Vance. Cold. Ice cold. Just like the tiger's eyes. Let's just watch and see what this looks like. Look at Vance's. Okay? And then look at the tiger's. Ice cold, baby. Right to the veins. Right to the core. You can't mess with it. Like, ice cold. J. 
JD Vance for VP, 100%. Uh, and if you didn't know, the International Longshoremen Association, President Harold Daggert, on the looming port strike. So what's going on? All the ports basically along the East Coast, 49% of what comes in. If you haven't heard, they're about to go on strike. And uh, let's see what he's got to say. And we'll close out on that. When my men hit the streets, from Maine to Texas, every single port, a lockdown. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you. First week, be all over the news every night, boom, boom. Second week, guys who sell cars can't sell cars because the cars ain't coming in off the ships. They get laid off. Third week, malls start closing down. They can't get the goods from China. They can't sell clothes. They can't do this. Everything in the United States comes on a ship. They go out of business. Construction workers get laid off because the materials aren't coming in. The steel's not coming in. The lumber's not coming in. They lose their job. Everybody's hating the longshoremen now because now they realize how important our jobs are. Now I have the president screaming at me, I'm putting a Taff Harley on you. Go ahead. Taff Harley means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a cool you off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are going to go to work on that pier? It's going to cost the money, companies money to pay their salaries while they go went from 30 moves an hour maybe to eight. All right, all right. So what's the deal with that, dude? He makes uh, $900,000 a year. So he really doesn't care about the average American, what happens to them. He cares about his longshoremen who work hard, long hours, doing labor, and how much they get paid. Don't know their average salary. Anyway, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Sigma Tiger, all up in your grill as usual. Um, mask's coming off. Perhaps we'll do a Halloween special. I don't know. We're talking about live streaming and all that. But the mask's coming off. We're reformatting all this. We're going to change it around a little bit from a little sig takes. All up in your grill, Sigma Tiger signing out.